Hello, my name is Rona Kindirti, and this is my Never Have I Ever um, Netflix series presentation. So before I get into the in-depth analysis of the show, I wanted to kind of give an overview of the show. So this show is about this Indian American girl named Devi, who's kind of portraying her own life growing up in America. And this show does a really good job, in my opinion, of portraying a lot of minorities from Indian Americans to East Asian Americans to an African American that's also part of the LGBT community. So past portrayals of Indian Americans in West Western media includes Apu from The Simpsons, who's actually had a lot of backlash on the show because of its extremely inaccurate portrayal of Indians. Also Mindy Kaling, who was the director of this show. In The Office, um, she portrays Kelly Kapoor and also Tom Haverford from Parks and Rec. And all of these people usually tend to be really annoying and on the talkative side. So whenever we think of or people in the Western media think of an Indian in TV shows or movies, they, they're usually assigned to the stereotype of a nerd or a geek. They're usually over obsessed with grades, college, science, things like science club, and they're not social at all. They're usually keeping to themselves and very not into their looks. So they're like unkempt with their hair and things like that. And as I said before, they're kind of annoying. They talk a lot. They usually have heavy accents, not in all of them, but a good amount. And people always think that Indians only eat curry, which actually this show, I believe, did a really good job of kind of countering. So first, I'm going to go ahead and discuss the inaccurate portrayals or things that just didn't sit right with me about this show. So the first thing that I think this show could have done a little better is that because this show was trying to bring in a new perspective, which is the Indian Americans, the uh, population that's growing almost every day in the U.S., they sh I believe they should have kind of had a narrator that was Indian themselves because having a Caucasian narrator just didn't fit right with the theme of the show because they mispronounced a lot of the names in the show as well as a lot of the festivities like Ganesh Puja saying it wrong kind of could be seen as offensive to other people because for every household in, um, in every Indian American household, if you're Hindu, they usually have one God they worship that primarily. And for some people that are Ganesh, this could have been really offensive to them. So one of the main problems I had with this show was Devi's obsession with sex. And because the portrayal of Indian Americans in Western media is so low, I feel like having this kind of strong obsession with sex would put a really different perspective on how people would view Indians. They'd think that Indians always want sex, things like that. And just because um, the way that Devi didn't even care if Paxton displayed emotion towards her, she just approached him for the sole purpose of sex and doesn't even stop the rumor when it goes around that Paxton had sex with her, it kind of shows that she's too obsessed with sex and this could lead to people thinking that Indians only want sex, which is not the true you know, purpose of the show. One recurring element in the show is Devi's disinterest to Indi towards Indian culture. And though I'm not disagreeing that a lot of people in, in, that are Indian American growing up in America might feel this way. I feel like if someone had this show, like Mindy Killing had the opportunity to highlight the show and highlight Devi, who was an Indian American in the show, they could have made her character more involved in her own culture instead of being kind of whitewashed and um, not really observed in her culture. And because of this, it kind of plays into more of the Western media not being too um, interested in her own culture. So um, having her own show would have been a great way to highlight someone's own culture, which I think they did a pretty good job in the Ganesh Puja episode. However, the way that she's always been disinterested in her own culture, asking people at the Ganesh Puja, like, why are you here? Or like, why this would be so weird if it was done somewhere else, was just something that didn't sit right with me. As in addition, the priest chanting in Sanskrit, which is uh, kind of the main way people offer prayer in Hindu prayers to gods, and then saying, just kidding, we'll do something easier just was um, supposed to be for comedic purposes, but I've been to multiple pujas in my life. Um, and Sanskrit is the language that we've all grown up listening to at pujas and reciting. And the fact that he had to make a joke out of it kind of downplays the Indian culture, especially Hindu culture. It's kind of just because they're making it seem like it's a joke. And pronouncing Ganesh incorrectly as well, just was kind of weird to me because growing up in an Indian American household like Devi with her mom who came from India and her dad, I feel like they would know how to pronounce it properly. But I will talk about this later that this could be because of an identity crisis.
And in addition, um, the way the priest kind of pokes fun at like um, his own um, occupation, where he says his website's called hindu.com, just kind of um, reintroduces this stereotype of how Indians just are there for comedic purposes. In addition, the coffee shop scene was kind of off-putting to me because usually if um, anyone specifically like women wear Indian women clothing, like sari, lehengas, or dupattas, anything that's mainly for um, extravagant wearing, you would think that this clothing would be covered up because not just because it's too flashy or anything, but also because it's really expensive too. And most people get them shipped from India, from their parents or et cetera. So they wouldn't want something to spill on it or something like that. So usually people would wear like a jacket or a small sweater over it. And however, the Caucasian customers that were pressuring Devi to taking a picture with her daughter just because of the looks of it. First of all, I don't really believe this would happen in the 21st century, but I'm not denying that it would not at all because there are some instances, but even if it did, I feel like this was something that has taken a bit too far in a sense. But um, yeah, so I wouldn't believe this would actually happen, but I feel like this show kind of did a good job at I, capturing how Indians might um, go through microaggressions like this, but at the same time, I wouldn't think that an Indian American girl would wear something like this in public, if that makes sense. Um, another point that I have to bring up is Indian aunties that were portrayed throughout the show. And Indian aunties in Indian in the Indian community are usually stereotyped to be kind of rude and snarky with their comments saying, oh, you gained a little weight or, oh, you're going to that college, wow. Whereas um, some of that might be true, but on, a majority of the Indian aunties are always really nice. They're caring. They think of every kid as their own kid. They always try to feed them and make them much nicer. And because the stereotype of them being very rude and snarky was overdone in this show, I feel like it, they should have mixed in some nice Indian aunties too, because the aunties I've grown up around were always nice to me, always trying to feed me nice foods and things like that. So um, kind of having the stereotype overdone um, was something that didn't sit right with me. So I feel like they should have mixed in some more. And another thing was the way that I believe that Indian American households or any immigrant household usually speaks the language that they came from, the mother country that they came from. So for example, in this show, they speak Tamil, which is a state in India, Tamil Nadu. And in immigrant households, I know that not every Indian household will speak their original language because of course, some people just might not feel comfortable with it. But I know that if this show was to highlight Indian American experiences in America, I feel like they should have brought out more Indian languages in the show. So in this case, it would be Tamil. And because this show is directed towards a Western audience, it makes sense that most of it would be in English. But take, for example, another show geared towards the Western audience for the, that's based on an immigrant household, fresh off the boat. Here, they have a character that only speaks in Mandarin, which is the grandma. And um, she talks about her life experiences where she was the only one who didn't speak English. And she basically talks in Mandarin Chinese the entire show. So just having at least one character that would talk in Tamil in this entire show would make this show more believable. And lastly, um, I believe that um, whenever they compared the likes of Devi to beauty, um, people in Bollywood that were kind of known for their beauty, like Priyanka Chopra, this is almost a little bit racist because not only is this, um, not only does Devi not look like Priyanka Chopra at all, but it's just showing that um, if anyone thinks an Indian is beautiful, they just think of someone else, not that person herself. She could have just said, you're beautiful, Devi, but no, she had to say, he had to say you're beautiful like Priyanka Chopra, which shows that um, there is a limited perception of the race to other communities. So now that I've gone over the inaccurate portrayals, I'd like to talk about like accurate portrayals and stereotype breakers as well. So one thing I think this show did a really good job about was how Indians only eat curry, which is something that a lot of Indians have gone through whenever they bring lunch to school and it ends up being curry just once or twice a week. Um, basically, this show showed a lot of times where these people, where the family would eat um, non-Indian foods, like they would eat tacos someday, I saw them eating pasta one day. And even though it's subtle, it really shows like how much attention to detail Mindy Kaling really put into the show, showing that though there's there are some stereotypes in Hollywood. I want to break that in this show. But it's also, 
I thought it was really interesting that some days they actually also stuck to their roots. And in this episode specifically, they were seen eating dosa and they were an Indian food and they were um, also giving it to Ben also. And um, it was interesting to see how they were giving this um, Tamil food to a Caucasian person also, which is really nice. In addition, mental illness is actually a really big stigma in the Indian community. A lot of Indian Americans tend to frown upon people that have a mental illness or think of mental illness. And this is also very minor, but understanding how the mother was able to put baby into therapy, and even though it's not really talked about how she put her into therapy, the fact that she's going to therapy really shows how the Indian mindset has progressed over the time periods and just showing that how, though it is subtle, the fact that the mother's, mother is paying for Devi's therapy and in the end actually goes to therapy also shows how it's they're getting more of a progressive mindset and they're actually taking into account like it's not going to be a bad thing anymore. People actually get diagnosed with depression, anxiety, and it's an actual mental illness. In addition, arranged marriage is actually a really big um, negative perception that people have of Indian people, specifically Hindus and not just in this, like almost any Indian community that gets an arranged marriage, because I've actually heard people talk about arranged marriages and think that, oh, I'm, I want my kid to marry my friend's kid and say it like that, but that's not all in arranged marriages. Usually what pe- happens whenever it's an arranged marriage is people get married to a family friend because of their social class, their caste, and other sorts of things that would be mutually beneficial for both families. But this doesn't mean it has to be forced. Of course, in some really extreme situations, it is forced. But in almost all of the time, arranged marriages are not forced. And the way that um, people usually think of it is that if it's arranged, you just see like the profile of the person and you're forced to marry them. But the show did a really good job highlighting that it's not forced, especially in the end where um, the mom sees Kamala and understands that she knows this whole time that she had a boyfriend. And then she says, no one's forcing you to do anything. And then they show Prashant. And they're saying all a family can do is just point you in the right direction. So just showing this show that um, the, this show did a really great job, in my opinion, highlighting the difference between an arranged marriage. And um, it might not be the case for everyone, like I said before, but in this case, it is arranged, not forced. Another um, part that I think this show did a really good job is kind of, even though it's subtle, kind of highlighting the way that Indian Americans apply to college because usually, um, or statistically actually, Asians do a much better, um, score much better on standardized tests on the SATs and ACTs on these tests. So which is why they need more things on their resume to show to colleges. And people have a hard time understanding this because they think if you have really good scores, like why else would you not get into a good school? Well, it's because like some schools have quotas for the races and the show really did a good job showing this. And though it is kind of blunt with the person saying it's kind of, you look like every other Indian kid, it's kind of true as well because a lot of Indians tend to do much better on these tests. And lastly, um, this show did a really good job in my opinion about capturing the identity crisis that someone who's grown up in two different cultures, one at home, one with their peers, and um, just seeing, just trying to understand where they fit in better for Devi's instance, it would be with her Indian community at home, and with her family and with her American community at school or in other gatherings. Just being raised in an Indian family, they might stick to their Indian beliefs and um, kind of stick more to their culture, but also growing up in an American community might just be more progressive in a sense. And they might think that, oh, I don't need to stick to my Indian beliefs. So this show, though um, she kind of, it was exemplified that she stuck more towards the American beliefs, we were able to start seeing a change in that trend, which I thought was really amazing. So in conclusion, I believe the show did a really good job um, highlighting the Indian American community in America, um, especially because it showed how um, Devi kind of changed over time and she really decided that she wasn't going to stick to her original roots at all, Um, uh, not primarily, but in the end she ended up coming back and thinking about herself and especially with her dad's ashes being scattered she really thought which one's more important being with my family being with my um or being outside in social areas and things like that so with that i believe this um, show was a really great show